day today and I'm headed down to classic speed. I gotta drop off some parts, check on some cars, road test, and do a lot of things because I gotta catch up. Last week I was in Singapore and I wasn't really vlogging, so I'm gonna make up content. So before I continue with this vlog, I wanna announce that the shop.angiemeetking.com page is now in-house so we can take care of your orders much faster than before. So please, if you guys want to support the channel, I know you guys do as much as you can, but for the extra mile, for those people looking for merch, we do print some shirts, some caps, and uh, we have some bags also on the shop.angiemeetking.com page. Give it a follow. Please, if you see anything, please order something and we'll get it delivered to you. And if I have time and I'm in the area, maybe I can sign it for you as well. Thank you so much. Anyway, I was in Singapore last week because we were doing some health checkups and health has been my number one priority in these past few days and it's so hard when I lack sleep and by lacking sleep I mean I only slept 6 hours 20 last night when in reality when I was younger 5 hours was totally fine but now I am uh, mid 40s <laughs> so I do love my sleep I do love feeling refreshed Got some stuff and stuff and stuff. Welcome back to Classic Speed. I was rubbing my rear tire. Oh shit. Here are the RX-7 wheels, rebarreled, thinner, flatter, front wheel drive look, but hopefully everything works. Beautiful thing about the trunk of the M4, it's pretty practical. So today's agenda is test driving the Evo rally car, test mounting the RX-7 wheels. I don't know if we can test drive the RX-7 also. I gotta check the wing for this car. The wing's not working, so Mark has to go through that. <laughs> Look what just showed up. The Sky Fiero is moving. So they just finished rewiring the ECU. This is running a new Link ECU and we brought some Link parts. So apparently the Sky Fiero is still lacking the O2 sensor. That was the sensor that we brought today. Excited! I think Larry Larry's gonna flip out when he sees this car. I'm curious to show him this creation. Larry loving JDMs and unique builds. This fits up in the category and it's so clean. Well, it's dirty now, but it, it meaning it's a clean build. So maybe we'll do some donuts. Just gonna pressure washer it real quick just to clean it out. The air system right here. Mark said the relay of the wing got pulled. So not a big job. I'm glad my rear fenders are still on because we were scraping pretty bad on the highway. For anything, Gotta get some coffee first. Just finished doing some shop updates. We're dying of fumes. Grab it, the fumes are galette. But if you guys saw in the last update, we were doing a complete wiring harness job for this car and now running. But doing some shop updates now, I got a test drive. The Evo, the Sky Fiero is for test drive, but we don't have an O2 sensor yet. And if you don't have an oxygen sensor, then you really can't push the car. But enough for us to bring it around. We'll do a quick tour and look at the FDR 7 So we've been working hard to figure out why this car keeps having issues and finally the boys have uh, figured out the oil line needs to be done so we're gonna do a quick testing why is my seat moving oh it's loose okay so we changed the whole wiring harness of this car it's actually a pdm system pdm is a power distribution module it is a solid state harness relay system where we don't use any fuses or relays it's been ages since we got this running idle's doing well we have so much information. Oil pressure, coolant temperature. Looks good. Oh, inaugural. Wow, the side mirror is completely useless. I cannot see anything. So the main problem with this car back then was it wasn't boosting. We would go out on track, the brakes would lock up, and the engine wouldn't boost. And we found out that we were lacking oil pressure to the turbo. So first off, test the brakes. Always important to bring a fire extinguisher with you. So this has the same problem as the E28 where my foot is hitting the steering shaft. The nice thing with being a rally car, you can pass it anywhere. Oh yeah. That blow up valve sounds amazing. <laughs> Handbrake needs to be bled too. 
Okay, the brakes need to be run in. I need to move the pedal a little. Don't like the position. nice quick short drive with the car everything is working already you gotta fix a few things and yeah the pedal having issues no it's so good the team here is so good migrated it to pdm migrated it to link ecu migrated it to god they rebuilt the brake and uh, this car is supposed to run in the rally series up in antipolo i can't wait to bring this car there and terrorize the track there i haven't raced with this car it's been a god five year project to get this running this is probably Probably the most all-out Group B-ish spec rally car in the Philippines and I was actually gonna sell it but because there's so much development that's gone into it I thought about it and I was like you know what let's keep it let's get it running properly and the boys at Classic Speed really know what they're doing and they've managed to just get everything running and I'm just happy that we were able to drive it let's look at it from the outside so it's got this Red Bull wrap from second skin I got the track tires these are actually intermediates for the racetrack now we do have some dirt tires also these are smaller brakes so that we can fit uh, smaller tires fiberglass doors and yeah just ready to rock and roll now we haven't weighed the car so we don't know the exact weight so the staff have already mounted the front tires on the fdr7 and i'm scared to look at it oh my god it fits oh shit it fits so well it's actually still in quanting alignment let's bring it out oh shit happy happy with this car this car gets my heart going it's been a minute. From the last update with the FDR-X7, we completely changed so many things with this car. And again, the team here at Classic Speed finishing all my projects. So we're gonna fire this up. Hear the beautiful sound of the rotary engine. We finally have a fuel gauge too. How cool is that? So neutral, firing, no power. Mahina, oh no. So jumper is on. <laughs> Sorry, lost power.
This car is mental. I can't wait. Mashad, I need a no. Mas madulas na drift tar. Pero for now, one of the most exciting car projects I've done. Grabe yung turning radius. So, kill switch, retune, alignment for the front tires and wheels, caster. And obviously, uh, do some finishing touches inside, but this one's almost ready. What's next on the test drive? <laughs> I know, but walang O2 eh. Okay, no, bridge naman yung mixture niya. Ano lang? Base, naka base tune siya. Pang roller, roller lang. Sige. Okay, last up for the test drive for today. Now we're gonna set our ride height. The car is running super rich. You can really feel it. The fuel in the eyes sting. Ride height's at 51. I don't know if this is the, the desired ride height. Maybe we'll bring it up just a little first, just to be sure. I haven't ran this car in years. This has been a sleeping beauty project from Carporn Racing. I guess that's its desired ride height. This is what I set a long time ago. My tires are 2013 expired, 100% expired. This car has been also through so many transformations. If you guys haven't seen the videos on my YouTube channel where we transformed this from an A31 pickup and then from an A31 pickup to a R33 and then from an R33 to an R34, it's all there on the YouTube channel. It's been years and years and years of development and I actually wanted to sell this car as well but I decided to keep it because I'm not gonna get much for it and it's so sentimental because this is sort of what set car porn on the map back in the day and it looks looks sweet everyone's like aren't you gonna get an R34 I'm like I have one just looks like a pickup now running an LS and we can't give it any stick yet because we don't have proper tuning timing looks advanced Wow, old school LSD. Alignment is way off. Steering's a little heavy too. Can't do much. I feel like the left is flat. So as Staff said, there's also very little gas, so we shouldn't go too far. But the boys here at Classic Speed really know what they're doing in terms of restoration, hot rodding, resto modding, and just rebuilding and rescuing projects. And I kid you not, this has been like, how many years of downtime and this car has been through five engines six engines the original rb24 and then i went with an rb25 and then i went with an rb26 and then i sold it to a friend and he put a sr20 and then from the sr20 it went into a 1uz then the 1uz changed to the ls3 that's the history for this car like we're losing ride height here. What is happening? Ow, the valves are right behind my ear. That's not cool. That needs to be vented into atmosphere. I'm sweating bullets. I, again, can't do much. If you don't know the condition, everything feels rough. Like steering wheel is off center also. It's pulling majorly left. So I don't want to do anything stupid just yet. Obviously, this used to be my mainstay drift car. The nice thing with the Skyfiro as a drift car, it was such a light load in the back, which meant we were really just using very little tires. But the only downside to the really light load in the back is during high speed, when you're doing transitions, it makes it hard to catch the rear because it's too light. In that sense, I basically ended up just doing wider wheels. So we're running two 7.5s in the back, which is fairly wide for the local drift scene. And I think we should be on 305s. And from the feeling of the suspension for this car, I think Kyle needs to rebuild the shocks. I really feel like it's very stiff. I am bouncing and we're not even moving that fast. We're gonna go back to the shop. This doesn't feel, doesn't feel solid. Quick handbrake pull. Yeah. Oh, yes. I gotta check the alignment visually. The shock needs to be rebuilt. Handbrake works well. I had to park it beside the R33. That looks like a beautiful shot. I swear, if you didn't know better, you could say this is a pickup R34. And one of my favorite features is the suicide doors. 
gorgeous. Last Sunday test drive is this. I actually don't know what year this is. I think this is a 65 narrow body. And this belongs to my neighbor. And my neighbor got it as an inheritance piece from his dad. And instead of selling it, he was like, I see you driving your muscle cars and I want to drive my muscle car daily. And we are getting the car ready so that he can use it in Manila traffic because it's different when we test here in classic speed because we go all the way to Subic. We haven't finished the paint and uh, I'll talk about the upgrades inside. At least this one has air conditioning. Now, when we first got this car, the owner basically told me that he was unsure of the car and uh, every time he drove it, he felt like he was gonna break down. He didn't feel assured that the car would make it to the next destination. He felt like the wiring was a little shoddy and then uh, he always felt like the air conditioning was not so cold, especially in Manila traffic when you get that heat soak from the traffic. He saw that I always drive my muscle cars and he thinks that obviously he's not a car guy and he thinks that he wants to keep this as a memorabilia in the family because it's what he got from his dad. So I'm here to make sure that everything in this car works perfectly. And one of my plans is actually to swap this with the Mach 1 later on and drive this to Manila just to prove it to him that this is a roadworthy vehicle capable of long distances. Now the upgrades to this car have been the paint. We did a repaint. We haven't polished it. Please don't mind the dullness. And then we upgraded the engine's uh, carburetor to an EFI, which is electronic fuel injection. The steering rack for better, tighter steering. I think the brake booster also. And then we decided to do the body and engine harness because when we first looked at the car, it was a lot of ratty wiring. Sorry to be frank, but it needed to be done, especially if we were going to put our name behind it and say that this car is ready for use. We're gonna go for a cruise. No donuts in this one. This is just a cruiser and again we want to make sure that it works well. The nice thing with these classic cars as soon as you put some money into them they become such good cars to use. Obviously if you end up doing things like the gearbox if we upgraded the gearbox to a four speed or a five speed whoa the brakes are so strong if we upgraded the gearbox to a four speed or a five speed then it would become more efficient for highway driving but for now we're sticking to the original three speed so that could use an upgrade but i'm here to test the roadworthiness see if there's any squeaks in the body look for any imperfections that we need to test. Wow, the brakes are amazing. I'm going to send a quick video update to my client. I noticed we haven't even offered him electric power windows because there's a kit for these windows to make it electric even if it looks original. And it's one of those must-haves, especially for Manila. Ride-wise, so small things like this where the ashtray, I'm going to put a piece of rubber so that when we're going through bumps, you don't hear the vibration like that where there. If I hold it down, you barely hear it. And then, yeah, the brakes are so powerful. Good though, good for safety. Gearbox is smooth, and the nice thing with these old cars is they're so easy to fix, especially Mustangs. Mustangs have so much support in the industry, and can't go wrong. Only a classic Mustang. Ride height check, going over humps, feels good staff shuffling the cars already. So happy that we got to test drive all these cars. Now that car, on the other hand, that's going all the way to Ilocos. So that's got a long journey ahead. Guys, that concludes our test drives for today. And wow, I think my friend will be super happy with this car. Shop is closing already. We're gonna have a quick lunch, head back to the city, and end the vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. See you guys soon.